Yes, I post selfies online. Yes, my son occasionally pops up in videos. But I don't want to intentionally exploit the ones I love for the sake of personal gain. Yes, I would love if my Instagram grew. Yes, I would love if my YouTube grew. I'm sure showing my son's face and my husband's face would help me do that. But I don't love social media that much to want to do that. If I will grow slowly if that's what it takes. Hi, welcome back to Humble Homemaking. If you are new here, welcome. I talk about all things homemaking, parenting, faith, and femininity. My name is Chelsea, I am married, I have one son, and I am a homemaker. And you probably won't see my son and husband's faces very often. Now my son makes occasional pop-ups in the video, but I do try really hard to avoid that because I don't like to exploit my family's identity. And that is actually the topic of today's video. I'm going to talk about why we shouldn't be doing it, what I see online. I'm going to give you seven tips slash reminders so that you can start to do things differently, still be able to share your family online, but add an air of mystery to your life while being able to protect your identity and your family's identity. Let me just start off by saying what I see online. I used to share my son's face online, but I have recently gone through and I deleted all of the pictures. There were very few of them on there, but I did go through my Instagram and I did delete them. And there are videos on here where he pops his little head up in the background or I picked him up a couple of times, but I really do try hard not to show his face, to cover his identity and to not exploit him because there are weirdos online and I don't want to share my son's life like that. And then as far as my husband goes, I really haven't shared him online at all. He does exist. I'm not going to share his face online to prove that for a few reasons. I don't want to exploit him. I do talk about some controversial things on my Instagram and on here, and I don't want anybody trying to verbally attack my husband. And I just, I don't, certain things I want to remain mine. It's not like my husband wants to be in my videos and he wants to show his face and he wants to talk. He doesn't want to be shown online. I respect that and I don't show him online. There are a lot of women that are okay with sharing their husband and their children online. And a lot of them are influencers where they make money off of showing their children online or showing their husbands online or they have family vlogs where that's what they do and that's normal to them but in my opinion keeping their identities is a lot safer because there are weirdos online there are people online that use the internet to be able to harm people or attempt to harm people. Overexposure of your life, especially if you are talking about things that are considered controversial, you don't want to be putting your family out there because you don't want your family to get verbally attacked. Now, I talk about con some controversial things on my Instagram. I would rather people personally and verbally attack me than go after my husband and my child, which I have seen on multiple accounts where, where the women are talking about something controversial and these mean people or evil people talk about horrible things or make threats online. They talk horribly about their children, how they look, or they talk about things that they're going to do if they ever see them in the streets. Not only are some women sharing their family's identities, but they're also taking pictures and videos and not paying attention to the background. I'm not talking about having a TV in your background or curtains in your background or a dog cage in your background or a chair in the background. I am talking about pictures where there are license plates visible, even mailing addresses. I've seen pictures where people took a picture and if you zoom in the picture in the background, you can see their mailing addresses on their bills on the table or on pieces of paper on the table. Another thing I see online is when people go on vacation, they tell people People when they're going on vacation they say where they're going on vacation they share too much they overexpose their lives to total strangers it is actually really terrifying how open people are with each other I wouldn't give out every single person in my DM who's nice to me my phone number I wouldn't tell them where I'm going on vacation anonymity is just so valuable yes I post selfies online yes my son occasionally pops up in videos but I don't want to intentionally exploit the ones I love for the sake of personal gain. Yes, I would love if my Instagram grew. Yes, I would love if my YouTube grew. I'm sure showing my son's face and my husband's face would help me do that. But I don't love social media that much to want to do that. If I will grow slowly if that's what it takes. Not showing our family's faces adds an air of mystery to our lives. I don't have to show my husband's face to let the digital realm know that I am madly in love with him. I don't have to show my child's face to let the world know that I adore my son. 
It is fine to share, but hide their identities. There's something a little disturbing to me when women snap pictures of their husbands when they are not expecting it and they post them online. Or even worse, when they take pictures of their husbands sleeping and they post them online. That's just weird to me. Would you want your husband doing that to you? Maybe some relationships are okay with that, but in my opinion, that's just a little too invasive. Here are some tips and reminders that I follow that maybe you can take into your life and post a little less of your family and should be able to share your family without overposting. One, start posting more faceless selfies. Number two, add emojis or stickers over your children's faces. What I do is I cover my son's eyes so you can still he see his little expressive smile. Number three, stop geotagging your photos. Turn off your geotagging in your phones. Don't let any apps know your location. I've seen women post pictures where they geotag the exact location of their house. And that's just really stupid. Even geotagging things that are within a 10 mile radius of you is a little unsafe and sketchy to me. Turn off your geotagging. There's no point in using it. Four is check your surroundings when you're taking a picture. Now I'm not talking about, hey, does this bookshelf look fine to me in the background? I'm talking about make sure there's no pieces of mail in your background. Make sure there's no bills with names on them. Make sure there's nothing with a lot of personal information. One time I was taking a picture of how I was cleaning out my fridge and cleaning off my refrigerator and I had to remove a bill that was on there because that had all of my personal information on there. My name, my address, my phone number, all that stuff visible in a picture. Make sure there's nothing with any personal identification in the background of your photos. Number five is ask before posting. Now if you still want to share your husband and your children online, by all means, do it, but ask before you post, especially if he doesn't know what you're posting or he just, he's just not on Instagram, maybe ask him before posting stuff. Ask him before posting a candid photo. I'm not saying don't take candid photos of your husband. I take candid photos of my husband, I just don't post them online. If I do, I hide his identity and I ask before I post. Stop telling people when and where you are going online. Stop sharing it on Facebook, stop sharing it on Instagram. What I do when I go places or when I travel is I will post things after I get home. Or I will post things a few hours after I leave a location. Or for example, when I was in Michigan for my baby shower, when I was pregnant with Atlas, I waited until I returned home to post about my baby shower. I did not post while I was there. I did not share things while I was there. I waited until I got home. I didn't want anybody to know where I was or when I was returning home or that, or the fact that I was gone from my home because I like my privacy. I like my anonymity. I don't like people knowing where I'm going. I don't like people knowing where I'm at. By people, I mean total strangers online. Seven, stop telling people your schedules. Especially as homemakers, don't share that information, okay? People already know that we stay at home with our children while our husbands are at work. But don't tell your don't tell people what your husband does. And if you do, don't tell him what schedule he has. If he works night shift or morning shift or afternoon shift, don't and don't do that because again, you don't want to overexpose your life and let people know certain details about it. So I don't tell you what time my husband goes to work and what time he comes home. I don't tell you his schedule because I like to again keep my privacy and keep my family's safety and my own safety in check. I am home with my son while my husband is working. And for all you know, sometimes my husband could be working from home. He could have the same hours at home. So, you, you know, I just don't share that information with you. I don't, and I don't think other women should. Take all these tips into consideration. And I mean, obviously you don't have to, if you want to keep posting your children, you want to keep posting your husband, you want to tell people when he works, where he works, for how long he works, share, you, you wanna share that information, that's on you, but I just feel that we are oversharing things in social media. It, careful, buddy. We're oversharing things with total strangers and it's just getting out of control. It's just, the internet is such an easy way for people to stalk people and so, you know, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, subscribe, and of course share with your friends or family or whoever needs it. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.